Hello, true believer. I have a head cold, so apologies if my voice sounds a little strange, but here we are on another adventure. This one's entitled Road to the Nose, after the Super Topo guidebook by the same name of Chris Mack. I went up a couple years ago with a friend for a two-week big wall trip to Yosemite, and we armed with Chris Mack's book, decided we're going to go up and literally follow the blueprint of the road to the nose. So we drove, it's about six hours, so you know, you get up at like five in the morning, I think we left at six, got there at noon, and kind of spent the afternoon just hanging out in the valley, getting coffee, going to the mountain shop, going through all our gear, setting up our camp, going to the bridge. I'm friends with Eric Sloan who runs Yosemite Big Wall and that season he was working at the Aska Climber down at the uh, El Cap Bridge down there. And so we're, you know, scouting the teams that are on the wall and kind of reintroducing ourselves to being in the valley after not being there for a while. And ironically, there was Yosar training in the meadow. And at first we were a little concerned, but we just found it was uh, litter and and extraction training. There wasn't an actual rescue. So everyone was fine, which was cool. So after they left, we said, okay, we've been hanging out all day. We haven't done anything. We need to actually get on this road to the nose thing. And so what Chris Mack recommends is, of course, doing a bunch of regular climbs. And then after that, doing some longer climbs and then going to do a couple first pitches of things on El Cap. And that is what we did this day, our first day. And that included the first pitch of the North American Wall and the first pitch of the Pacific Ocean Wall, both climbs that I really love to do the whole thing of. But the nice thing was we could go up after a couple hour rest of being out in the car and get a one pitch climb in that we each led and each followed. So Tom did the first one and I cleaned, and then I led the second one and he cleaned. And it gave us a chance to just kind of knock the rust off, get a chance to climb together, get all our systems dialed, and not worry about having the weight of a haul bag and hauling and being exhausted and all of that stuff. It is quite a different world to go first of all it's a six hour drive and then secondly it's probably a whole half another half days worth of prep to get all your gear organized and get up there so to do that and go straight into walls harsh it's much nicer to go up and enjoy the sunset as you can see here and then just walk down and go have dinner and hang out anyway so the next day we went up on the same side the uh, zodiac side and we did El Cap Tree, which is the next recommendation from Road to the Nose. We had some really nice photos, as you're seeing here, that were taken by Jeff Arricchio from Arricchio Photography. He's an old school climber buddy of mine who lives in Arizona. I believe his website is Photo by Jeff, so you can check him out. And he does a lot of photography in the valley when he's there. So we went over to, there's a separate pull-off parking area, not down next to the meadow, off to the side, where you can go for uh, the Zodiac, and you can hike straight up the Talus Field. So it's a great place to kind of rack up and then just blast. It is a steep hike, but it gets you straight up to the base of a lot of those climbs on that side. I gotta say... El Cap Tree is super bomb. I did not know about it until I read the book, but uh, Road to the Nose, but uh, I would highly recommend it. It's uh, four pitches, I believe. It traverses the entire way, which is actually great because it gives you a lot of practice of doing low routes and moving sideways instead of just vertical, which is more traditional, obviously. Most of the climbs in Yosemite go up because they follow cracks and systems like that. But uh, it was really nice to be able to kind of just start off with a lot of changing terrain. The first pitch especially, you scramble up a little bit and then it's this big traverse. You get some bolt ladder stuff, you get some fixed pieces, and then you're proper aiding after that. So I led the entire climb and Tom belayed, cleaned, followed. And again, we didn't have anything with us. There was no hauling, there was no bags, there was no gear. It was literally just let's dial the system in, we'll get a couple pitches in, and we'll have a good time. It also has a wonderful view 
of El Cap. You get to see not only because it's a very vertical flat section on the Zodiac side, but also because you're traversing. So you're literally moving across the wall. So in a lot of these pictures like here, you'll see the view is just really fantastic. And of course, you're looking directly across at the cathedrals and down at the meadow. I just can't recommend it enough. Actually, too, very interesting. There's so much to do in Yosemite that I've always felt like, well, why do anything twice? Unless I'm going to go with someone who's never done it or doesn't have the experience, and I would like to have them be on a wall that I know. This is one of the few climbs that I would really like to actually go do again. And it might actually be really fun to go do with someone, and I could do like Tom's role, where they would lead the whole climb and I would simply follow. But I did want to say this quick story. The reason they call it El Cap Tree is, as you can see, there is a tree up there, which is dead, unfortunately. And the lore is, back in the day, some of the guys went up and they strung Christmas lights attached to a generator, and then they had a lit Christmas tree up on El Cap. Unfortunately, it killed the tree, but the lights are still there. So, long and short, go up, get road to the nose, do El Cap Tree. It's super bomb. See you in the valley.